Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hi, welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. It's Darlene Hayes with Connie Wright. Patricia is actually off today, but um, we have Officer Phil Powers. Phil is here as a Hopkinton resident, as a resource officer, and. Um, this will be airing on graduation night and a dad of a Hoffington graduate tonight. Yeah, that's correct. My daughter, Julia. That's Congrats. awesome. I saw you the other night at the uh, senior dinner yeah. dance. Yeah, that was a fun night. It was awesome. She's had a great time. So, awesome. See, by now, you've been at the school several years as a resource officer. Is this like your fourth graduating class? No, it's probably like eight. All right. Eight? Yeah. yeah. So, so back so. up a bit. You live in town. Yes, I've, I moved to Hopkinton 11 years ago. Great. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I've been an officer in Hopkinton for 28 years. Wow. Over 28 in November. So. 28 in November. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. And previous to that, I was uh, a police officer at uh, Upton. That's where I started. Okay. Yeah. So you were. Did you grow up in the, the area then? No, well, I grew up in Milford. And that's and, cool. Uh, yeah, around. that's the area. Yeah, yeah, that's the area. <laughs> yeah. But when I grew up, I never even heard of Hopkinton. It was always <laughs> Hope Deal, Bellingham. But sure. Well, that, when I grew up, um, I grew up in Ashland. Every Sunday, we drove to Providence for Sunday dinner at my grandmother's. Um, 495 didn't come up to Hopkinton at the time, so we took 85 all the way oh, down yeah. and we picked it up. That 405 stopped right where the whole Target exit is. Oh wow! And that's where I, I, I learned to drive. That that was my route to drive to my grandmother's house. Yeah. Then they extended it down to Franklin. Then you had to get off in Franklin if you right. were down and to the Cape. Right. And then you had to take Route to take One for was, you took Route One for a while. Yeah. But it was great because like I got to drive rural. I drove highway, and then I drove like a you know a, a median kind of strip. Yeah. Very cool. Very the, cool. Um, so so you've been in town now. Um, your kids. Are in the school system. Yeah, two of my children, out of th two out of three, graduated from Hopkinton High School. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, so um, it's a great school system. So wait, does is, is this mean you're going to be an empty nester? I am. I oh am. my so, word! Um, so your baby is graduating. My baby's going to be gone. She's going to be far away. She's going to London for school, which is pretty exciting. So we were just chatting offline. Daughter's going to be studying fashion and fashion, fashion. design That's at the cool. London School of Design. Yeah. Yeah. Which is I'm a little nervous. Very it's, critically uh, it's a acclaimed. long ways to go, but, um, um, but excited know. that I will see London this year. You know so. what? So and will she, she be in a dorm? Will they? They have a dorm. Yeah, she uh, just got the information about a dorm last week. It's funny they don't have like a regular cafeteria or a food plant over there, so she's basically on her own. I guess they share a kitchen. Uh -huh. There's a bunch of rooms, and they have a, a, a kitchen that everybody shares. So she'll have to make do her their own. own cooking. Yeah. So. Oh, like for every meal they have to cook yeah, themselves? Yeah. Oh, well, wow. I guess I have a few cafeterias on site or on the um, campus, uh, but mainly her meals will be done in the kitchen in her dorm. So. What part of the city will she be in? I have no idea. <laughs> I've never been over there. I'm excited to go someday. So uh, That's cool. How exciting. Yeah, it is. It is. So, so is this the furthest any of your kids have gone away to school? Yeah, my daughter, my oldest daughter went to Worcester State, and okay. then my son went to Bridgewater State. And so, so he's local. there's someone into the service, too, yeah, he so just, he's gone very far away, to be honest. Yeah, he's he was over in served. Afghanistan. Yeah, he's been back for a year now. Now he's a corrections officer in uh, Concord. Oh, great. Oh. Yep. So. That's, that's great. Hope, hopefully he'll get a police job, you know, in the yeah. near future. He wants Has he to taken the civil service exam? He's taken, he did very well in the civil service test, so. That's great. But Hopkinton's not civil service, so. So this, over the last, you know, eight years, this transition as a resource officer and being on campus, that's fairly new Well, it's in some ways. we've probably have had it going in Hopkinton for at least 15 years now. Yeah. And I started it as a, doing it part-time. Jay Porter, who was a full-time SRO, uh, was in the high school, and when he had days off, I would step in for him. And I had the middle school, he had the high school. Um, and we shared the other schools, but uh, so it's been going for at least for 15 years, and so, that was a grant. Yeah, I remember because um, my kids were in the school system then, and when it was originally kicked off. Well, your husband was probably on the school committee yeah. at the time yes. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. So the um, you must build some bond with these kids too, that they know you by name and. Yeah, and, um, I have all five schools now, and I like it that way because the kids grow. And they have me to turn to a familiar face going from school to school to school. So this 
class here that graduated. I, I was the SRO back when they were in kindergarten. Yeah. So it was pretty exciting. And, and you know, they get to know you, they get to trust you. You know, you have to have a, a great relationship with them to, to succeed in this job. So, so you, you, you know them all by name, and when you see them on the street, maybe doing something you know their mama wouldn't like them to do, you can say, Joey, yeah. your mom doesn't want you doing that. I, I, I wish I could remember all their names. But we're talking 1,100 students in the high school and 800 and something. Uh, but you know, it's, real, it's a great job. Uh, the ninth, I'll be going to Washington with the eighth grade. I've been doing this. will be my tenth year going Seriously? to Washington. Yeah. yeah, and it's great because they get to see me in a different light. You know, the, I don't wear my uniform. I don't wear a uniform now, anyways. But uh, well, that, that's it, there's a uniform, that, that but a it's uniform. more. It's a softer uniform. It's a, cat, more you know, it's a Friday cat. Approachable. Well, so here's a little something now, and and um, I don't know what your rules. You know, the the Hopkinton. Uh, uh, police department's rules are, but my cousin's retired FBI, and he had to be um, at all times armed. And so right now you're armed. I'm armed. I'm armed all in the case time. Anytime I decide yeah, to go yeah. postal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so when you go on the the field trip, are you armed then or no? Uh, no, I, I because Washington, the, the laws of Washington, well, that's you can't go into any of the national parks, even being a police officer. officer. Yeah, you can't. So, so I don't. Um, you know, hopefully, you know that's okay. You know, <laughs> but I, I try. Yeah, you know, I try to do my job through words. Mm -hmm. You know, a gun is just a tool that I have. Yeah. You know, but it's just probably the, the least tool I'll ever use. Yeah. So. Well, it's certainly the tool of. But I am. Right. Have to remember, you know. I am still a police officer. Yeah. So, but, I mean, so. I think the neat thing is how much you are involved in our community and what you're doing. I mean. Um, what was it? Last week or the week before was the fishing derby. Yeah, two weeks and ago. And I know my kids went to it when they were little. It was a blast. Though my husband always worked Saturday night, I got stuck with fishy hands. Um, <laughs> and like bait and gross things. I remember there was always like a golden trout. I don't know if yeah. you did that. And then the yeah. kids would win like little fishing rods or go up and get frisbees and nerfs and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we, we did that. We brought it back. We haven't done it in about five years. So we, I decided to bring it back. And um, it was a great success. We had 135 kids uh -huh. show up. And you um, still put T-shirts on all the we, kids? You know, supply a T-shirt for all the kids. We have a cookout after hot dog, yeah, hamburgers. so much fun. Um, what else? Trophies. You know, I get big trophies. Kids love well, the trophies. I know my, my oldest did it years ago. Um, I, now, see, I'm the inverse. I'm the fisherman in the family. First time my son caught a fish, my husband made him uh, return it because he didn't know what to do. And so he called me at work and said, Mom, I said, next time? Put it in a bucket of water in the shade, and when I get home from work, I'll, yeah. <laughs> I'll get one of those little stringers and you just leave it in the water. I, I grew up, uh, well, you know, I, I grew up you know, doing that. Yeah. So you have the fishing derby. Yeah. You have we the put three league. golden trout in this year. Did you win a special prize, one. One. Yeah. So there's still two yeah, floating around. I think around. they got a fishing rod if they got yes. that. Yeah, there was like a did. fishing oh, rod. Yeah. Like yeah. That. You and couldn't do a trophy because somehow it's hard to catch those golden trout. Oh, sure. I'd have to change the plaque every year. They know. were always caught in the weeds. I remember, like, off on the side, the kids that caught those. And I never wanted to be there. I wanted to be close to the food. I wanted to be close to, like, the parking lot. Yeah. And you could actually see them swimming around. The water's pretty clear down there, too. Yeah. So, And one boy caught a 21-inch uh, bass. <gasps> Seriously? Yeah. We, we, stocked, we spent $1,000 to stock it with, uh, with trout, which we only got 125 pounds of trout. I don't know what, how many fish that is. but uh, Wow. Yeah. So we do that. And it's all through donations throughout the town. That that's great. Right. Well, that's well great. I mean, that's things like um, the, like the policeman's ball or gala that you have. When people pay for that, that's what they're off, the, the costs are offsetting is these kind of events you guys have Absolutely. that are really good. Yeah, we also put on a senior dinner at Christmas time for the, the you know, at the senior center. We put on a nice uh, ham and uh, turkey dinner oh, that's for all great. the seniors. That's great. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. It's a great time. And if there's any money left over from soliciting for the uh, Fish and Derby, it goes directly to that. Uh, oh, cool. To offset the price for that. So, what are uh, I, you're in the the schools, and you know, what are some other kinds of community engagement? I mean, that's that's probably the big topic with police departments, and you know, knowing your constituents and everything. Well, you know, what? How, well, you have to remember when a police officer shows up in your house, it's usually for a bad reason. Yeah. You know? So that's why I think it's important to have my position in the schools to be there for the kids for good things, mm -hmm. you know, mostly good things in my, my job, but to just build the relationships, you know, we don't just do all bad things, we right. respond to all bad incidents, you know. That's why it's like, it's great when we have the fishing derby, 
where the kids can meet a police officer because we have a great turnout with our department uh, just to see them with their children out there fishing you right. know to see that we are human you know we're, we're just like them you know we wear shorts we wear flip-flops and that's you know going to washington the kids see me dressed like shorts and the t-shirt flip-flops they go wow you know, they think <laughs> i sleep in my uniform but, but, well uh, it's like you know see, it's, seeing you at the senior dinner dance center like a tie and a jacket yeah it's you know he's not there as officer phil he's there as julia's dad yeah, exactly yeah. exactly so yeah mm -hmm. um you know and you know we do a lot of other things too uh steve buckley does a uh, community uh, policing and you know, he'll come to your house and talk to you about better ways to secure your house you know we've had okay. some house breaks so that's a you know a service that we have uh, do, do you guys still do the car seat checks yes yeah, steve buckley and uh, linda higgins they both do that were you uh, when um because that was a nervous first time mother um after my baby shower before Andrew was born, I took the car seat still in the box to the police station. Mm -hmm. They installed it in the car. Well, they showed how to put it in, yeah. how to take it out, and how to and do it all. The new car seats are even easier. Oh, I, I mean, thought they were worse. With, with the new jiggies, it's worse. Yeah. <laughs> with the new cars, they have something you just clip it into. Ah, so it's easier. Yeah. So that it, it's way. it's not to, to put the car seat in for you. It's to teach you how I to do it. Taught me how to do it, but yeah. I was I want you know. A funny story when I you know I just bought a new car. I, my, my daughter was very young and she was in the car seat. We were coming down 495, I get off at the ramp. And I hear my daughter crying and I look, she's tilted over, you know. So <laughs> it's very important to get that seat in, you know, say, especially going say, down ramps on 495, you know. So. Well, and when our kids were little, I mean, I, you know, had the, the typical like mom sedans or whatever, but the, uh, my husband drove um, a Wrangler with no roof and no doors on it. Oh my goodness. So we literally had an infant car seat and a toddler seat next to each other, going down 485, and people would always be looking, but that was the one car I'd always make sure, like, can you double check yeah. it, can you double check it, because it looks bad. Yeah, it does look and bad. And it stuff bad. like I that. Had, I had a Jeep just like that, and when I had my Eventually, first child, I got, I got rid of it. By I, the time yeah. Melissa was about a year and a half old, I made him get rid of it, because he wouldn't put the doors and the roof on, and I was like, you know what, I, I can't take the looks of people with the kids in the back of this. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. They probably call DCF on you now. So. Probably. So when you, when you think about the town, and you know, we, we um, actually made like one of the safest towns in the country list, you know, top 100 or something in the country. Yeah. Um, but we aren't without our issues. I mean, what, what are some of your concerns as we continue to grow? And, and just, you know, we also have so many outside influences. Um, what, what are the things that, that, you know, you sit and worry about? Well, <laughs> sorry, hot seat. Yeah, yeah, hot seat. Well, <laughs> well, right now we have the, the, the gray car incident, you know. Um, we, every gray car that drives through a neighborhood, we're getting calls on it. And it's great that we get these calls. An important part of information that people forget to give us, yes, it's a gray car, it, the gentleman's got gray hair or what about whatever. The plate? Get the license plate, you know. The, the gray okay. car doesn't tell us anything other than the car is gray. A license plate will tell us everything about the car, the person who owns it, you know, so the license so, plate is so, so important to be get. Be vigilant about information, mm -hmm. so, you know, to kind of extrapolating that to the bigger picture, you know, when you see something, mm -hmm. say something, but when you see something, get a few more details. I would tell you, if Not I just that, should, what's very frustrating What's the most it, popular color of cars out there? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Exactly. Like I said, if you go in the parking lot of the police station right now, we'd probably have three or four <laughs> great cars. Yeah. There. Um, but call right away. You know, we get so many phone calls saying, yeah, two hours ago, a great car, and, you know, call immediately. Even if, you like, we have a lot of vandalism in town, like mailboxes and, you know, eggings. And, um, Which tends to be probably middle schoolers and high schoolers. High probably schools. high schoolers. High schoolers. Yeah. 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 Access to cars. Got it. Yeah. So when you hear that bang, it, against your house don't wait till the next morning to call to us yeah right. you know or you hear the crash call us right away you know because we may have a cruiser right in that neighborhood yeah. or we may have just stopped the car in that neighborhood you know well and i actually have a different take on that i have prior to any of that happening it tends to be a springtime event it doesn't happen as much in the winter um it's but because it's too cold they don't want to know, know. Want <laughs> but to me as a parent, if you believe your child isn't capable of doing that, then 
it's your child that's probably doing that. And you have to have a conversation. I believe there's oh, I, a parental side yeah. to, you know, if you know people that are doing it, you know, you should not be part of it. Um, same with underage drinking, which, you know, I, I always, in the spring, and seniors graduating, and we have a little bit to go before they graduate, and I hold my breath, and I tell my kids, look, um, you have a responsibility, and you need not to be part of it, and you need to say something, you need to remove yourself, but you know, let's do, yeah. let's not have the opposite well, I, I agree like with you. Have sadness. that conversation. You know, if you had a dozen eggs in your refrigerator yesterday and they're all gone today, <laughs> well, I'm sure they didn't bring them over to their friend's house. Yeah, you know. Diet all you know. of a sudden. Well, maybe, or, or but you may want to just have ask a question. Maybe you know? they went shopping and the egg carton is right. now in your trash. Exactly. You know, it's like, why is yeah. there an egg carton in my trash? It, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're aware of that, you know, it might save us some aggravation yeah. later on. So yeah. Have a conversation with your child about it because, you know, eggs on a house, eggs on a car, it's very hard to get off and it also will, and the kids right. don't realize it, it ruins the paint on yeah. your car and your house. So. Now that's a, that to me is nuisance and annoying and... It's still vandalism. But it, it is vandalism. It, yeah. It's kid vandalism, and, yeah. you know, and, and it's actually a felony if they get caught. They Ooh. can actually be charged with a felony, which, you know, a, a lot could happen. That could affect your college, that could affect your job later on in life too, because a felony stays with you forever. Yeah, you know. and, and, it, and, and it, when you fill out an application, have you ever been convicted of a felony? The question is, have you ever been charged with a crime? It used to say, have you ever been arrested? Now, most college applications, job applications, have you ever been charged with a crime? You could have been found not guilty, and, but the question is still asked. Wow. So that's so, why you know, it's important, important. To, to understand that. Have that conversation yeah. with your children. You know, so. um, what about, you know, it, as, you know, again, we're a growing community. Um, uh, it, we're trying to attract new businesses. And so we're uh, clearly um, have a lot of people coming through town that aren't residents that are working in town, um, you know, how does that impact you guys? Because uh, I, I know resources are always tight and it's always an issue. And, yeah. and how do you guys, what, what's your forward look and, and you know? Well, the traffic is horrendous. It, it's, you know, thank goodness my commute's only of a 16th of a mile to get yeah. to work. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, you know, traffic, I could actually walk to work. So um, traffic is a huge problem and it's very frustrating and especially the 495 like just yesterday they had a truck roll over 495 so people how did that affect the Hawkinton well everybody got off in Milford and came down 85 we had buses that were late for school yeah. we had you know parent drop off you know so it, it really affects the schools you know the kids getting into school so traffic is a huge problem in town uh, you know during the commute hours every once in a while I work a 3 to 11 shift an overtime shift and it's like you can't go anywhere. You really, you know, because Main Street, Hayden Rose Street, the, the traffic going up, uh, coming up 85, it's way past the state park. You know, it's, it's crazy, the traffic in town, so. What about? Um, and then that turns into road rage. Yeah, like, so, people get, you know, and, and, and violate, you know. Like, I'm afraid to take left-hand turns. I, I don't like taking left-hand turns into traffic. It's a, and I had an aunt that would only take right-hand turns. And, for a lot of ways, you'll see that, like, I will actually go around a block to not take a left hand turn. I'll do that in a cruiser. If, if I have to cross traffic, I won't do it. And, so, and that's like coming out of, like, Cumberland Farms or something like that. And I, I, I'll, Street. I'll turn right, go into, like, you know, the old Golden Spoon yep. parking lot, come out Lumber right. Street, where I know I have a light. light and it's you safe have a to chance. Because it's scarce. But there are, like, and I, that, I, what is it called? Like Lumber Street Extension? Yeah. yeah. That, that, that area always seems to have accidents in different areas down um, by where South Street and uh, yep. West Main are. Because when you're coming down, you don't know. And you guys actually supported a program, and I, I think you guys still do, that my son took a couple of years ago, um, the controlled crash prevention class. It was up in Andover. Yes, yes. And it was taught by race car drivers. And the one of these are like, like, and I'm like sitting there, they're like, don't take left-hand turns into traffic. There's always a way to yeah. go right around it, well, and I, don't back up. Uh, yeah, don't <laughs> yeah. back. But I told my kids, if you if Pleasant Street, and when they were you know driving home from school or something like that, can be tough to turn left onto Main. Street. Onto Main, and I said, take a right, 
Then you can take a left-hand turn into any of the streets, turn around, and then you're, got, you're taking a right-hand turn going down Main Street. And she goes all the way down to Kalala's and then yeah, the, that, well, and the lights. And fast. that's what I will do unless that's I have blue lights on, then I'll go yeah, down. And, stuff like, yeah. Yeah. and it's because blue lights on. <laughs> you have that in the end. Yeah, I do. Well, it better, it better <laughs> be a real call there yeah, <laughs> because then I'm violating the law just no, like no, anybody no, else. No. So, but, yeah. Uh, one more thing I want to, you know, about what, yep. what we do outside the police department is we also put on a basketball game with the oh, Special that's Olympics. Right. So that's, oh, that's, that's right. is that coming up soon? No, we do that usually uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend. Oh, okay. And we have it up to yeah. middle school, and uh, that that's a lot of fun, too. And it's the police against the Olympians there, and uh, everybody gets a trophy at the it's end. It's great. Oh, it's, it's awesome. So that's, I love doing that. It's so much fun. I even had uh, one of the girls up to high school sing the national anthem this year, and she did a wonderful job, Miley Riley. Oh, Riley. Uh, Riley. So then you, um, you guys are probably part of things like, you know, some of the PTA or events like Touch a Truck and things like that. Yeah, have vehicles I'll be up. up there on Sunday for Touch a and Truck. And then there's you know, the 300th and all that stuff and Horribles Parade you guys are in. It's yeah. like you guys are everywhere. You know. Yeah, well, the, we're the police. We have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, but, but I mean, not... Everywhere you're there, everywhere doing, being seen, being, being out seen, there. being things, yeah. being part of it's the community. Important. It's important. And you know, I think to the point where the kids are actually like at the high school. When you talk to Andrew, you will be like, "Oh yeah, I went and asked Officer Phil this," or that was just commonplace that you have an office there. You can yeah. go find you and ask a question. You know, I know his car didn't start one day, and AAA was coming in and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, w I let Officer Phil know my car is going to get towed. Yeah, it, it's, it's important to have that relationship for the kids. So when an emergency does happen, that they feel comfortable talking they to, have somebody to another go. police officer. Yeah. Or if something happens when they're on vacation, that they'll feel comfortable. Because, you know, sometimes police officers get a bad rap, you know. And now, you, as you know, hearing what's in the news now, you know. Now, do you go to the school dances and stuff? Usually. Usually. Yeah. I'm like sure that. your daughter loved that. <laughs> well, it, it was funny because when my son was in high school, you know, he was complaining because I was working a school dance. And, and Julia says, Dad, well, I, I mean, Philip, why, why are you upset? You know, I'd love to have my dad. I said, Julia, put that in writing. She did. I still have it. <laughs> I was at her prom last year, and uh, I'll be going on the boat cruise uh, on Tuesday night. Good. So. So I just remind her of that little note that you, you wrote. Remember, you wrote this. You might have been in the fourth grade, but you, you still wrote that. Yeah. So I want my daddy yeah, at the Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, exactly. That so is she. Just yeah. too. What about um, you know when we have the marathon every year? Of course, then we have all sorts of communities. Yeah. The police forces. So it's probably the you, safest place in the world. That to be, <laughs> but yeah. but you um, integrate with the surrounding police departments ongoing anyway. Yes. Uh, so uh, are, do you guys do any um, training or cross training or are there formal interactions or is it just simply as things happen, um, departments communicate? Most police officers are trained the same so we don't really have to like, you know, the firearms, when we go to the firearms training, that's the same. Ashland would take the same kind of training that we mm -hmm. would. So, you know, different states might be different, but in Massachusetts it's basically all the same. So we don't really have to. Uh, we have uh, like a SWAT team, but that's multi departments working sure. together. So um, uh, we don't really put a yeah. lot of training into you, you it. You had a great picture up on Hot News. Um, oh, yeah, my back Call of East, Duty, yeah. Uh, uh, back on East, and then. Uh, I just at, got back from vacation, and a, too. Kid, a kid at the high school changed it into like a video yeah. game. It was a really cool picture. Yeah, they, they put my. I was holding an assault rifle, and um, the kid changed it, took that picture of me, and put it on Call of Duty. The, the, the game. video the game. game, yeah. It's actually awesome. So. It's a great, you should yeah. play that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's That's an adorable. awesome picture. It, it was. I, so. And I know we've talked about the youth and, you know, the different community events. Um, and I said, my, you know, I grew up in Ashland. My parents are still there. And one of the things that I've relied on, you know, the Ashland Police for is if I can't get a hold of them or well visits or that um, they've oh, actually sure. had, um, like, yeah. they have, like, a seniors at risk thing. So they'll actually, like... Or if you off the cake in the oven and the person fell asleep and didn't take it out, you, you, we'd go... Yeah. That was a call. But they, they were... I, uh, they've literally banged in my parents' doors yeah. and stuff like that to we check that on them. Um, and that if you can't... They're there as well visits and, yeah. and checking yeah. on yeah. well-being. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we do that quite that a bit. Town. And 911 hang-up calls, um, you know... Motor vehicle lockouts, you know, when you lock your keys in your car, we still do that. Um, we do I house checks. <laughs> I remember when my kids were little and I had my keys in the car <coughs> and 
and I was loading it up with my kids, and one of my kids, who was Houdini, who could get out of his car seat, we won't name names, got out of his car seat, hit the lock, locked him in the car, locked me out of the car. There was one other kid in the car, I think it was Cam, who was too little, you know, like an infant. Yeah, it happens all the time. And day. had to call because there were, you know, I wasn't at home. I was by my keys. I was like, crap. Yeah. You know, like, it happens. And we probably do that almost <laughs> daily. You know, really? Yeah. You know? I mean, well, when, when a child's locked in a car, it's, yeah, the priority is a little higher. You know, higher up, you know. Uh, if we have to smash a window, we'll have to have a child in it. But yeah. if it's just lock your keys in it and the yeah. ice cream's melting, we made it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like it's groceries. Awesome. Ice but that's one of our services, and it's great. I love it because um, you get to meet people. Yeah. You know, and that's how you get to meet. In, in a good way, you know, you're helping yeah. somebody out. Well, and, and I know before we go on vacation or other people, we actually, it's not that, sometimes you'll park a cruiser in someone's driveway or something like that, mm -hmm. and so, but that we actually let you guys know <laughs> we're going to be away because we know you're patrolling neighborhoods yeah. anyhow, but keep an eye up that the house is there. Yeah, and if that like, is you know, great advice you know, for summertime. If, if the windows are all open, there's loud music coming out and, you know, 17 teenagers on my porch and wait a second, they're on vacation. Yeah. We, we have a program, the house check program. You can call the police station. We'll come to your house and check it daily. Really? Yeah, yeah, and that's what we do. That, yeah, we'll check it. And that's, know, we, we, we do it every single day. I yeah. failed, and that's great advice, and that's a good um, summer tip um, to know because, you know, I'll often tell a neighbor, but I need to be telling you guys when I'm out of town. Oh, sure. Um, well, it, and it, then it if, you're, if you're on, like, a busy drag, like my parents live on Corville Road in Ashland, yeah. they're like, well, we have to, they, they do a lot of speed checks there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just park in my parents' driveway. Yeah with the gun as they, I you know, as they get ready for to, them to do speed checks i'm on a hill on saddle hill and they go, we, have, we have one right officer that, yeah, that's up there a lot uh, yeah, uh, okay. he can park yeah. in my driveway yeah. any day yeah. you know so and that's you know it's frustrating to neighbors i mean to, to residents that you know kids speed by hours oh, especially yeah. when your kids outside kids. It's well you know, it's, I know. It's, but it's, it's, it's 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 everybody especially you know probably going to your up by your house it's people late for a tea time you so, know so uh, i know we're winding so. down but i want to congratulate you on julia graduating well, and you. going thank to london yeah. and um this is going to air on graduation night so as people are having parties and stuff like that please be safe yeah, guys. Uh, safe. Yeah. just one bit of advice on graduation parties out from you to just just if you're having a party and there's going to be alcohol just monitor the alcohol you know one of the suggestions if you have a keg you, you know, serve in, in clear cups because if you use those red solo oh, cups, you, you have know. no idea what's in that cup. Great advice. But just, you know, just be aware of what's, you know, if you have an alcohol-free party, right. you know, that, w that would be great. But I know, you know, it's, there are adults there and there are responsible yeah. people there. Right. So, um, you know, just be more aware. Have people that you know and trust out watching out for you, you know, yeah. make sure the other kids aren't showing up with, you know, containers. And, yeah, because you know, so. yeah. Yeah, it ends up being ultimately your responsibility. So. Yeah, I mean, if something did happen, you can be held liable for it under yeah. the social host law. Yeah. And then thank you so much for coming. Oh, and yeah. Thank you so My much pleasure. for what you do for the community. Well, it's yeah. a great job. I love what I do with the kids. Um, some of the guys I work with kind of call me the police officer now you know because, <laughs> because I'm always defending the kids but they need a resource they need somebody to be able to turn to a and, safe uh, haven yeah you know because and, and parents you know they need advice what should I do should I get a lawyer no let's let's back up a little bit let's talk about it slow down and you know we'll, yeah. we'll work through it great so. And that's All a right. big part of my job, and that's when I can help them out. That's great. Yeah. Again, thank you. Thank you All so right. much. All right, thank you. Thank you. 